hello everyone, welcome to my talk. Uh, my name is Mohammed. Uh, I'm software engineer at STM Defense Technologies and Engineering and Trade Inch. Uh, normally, uh, we are a defense company and we are not interested in automotive, but for one of our customers, <coughs> we need to develop an uh, automotive in vehicle infotainment system. Uh, let me talk about my company. We have uh, 26 years experience in the industry and mostly uh, <coughs> we are interested in air and naval platforms. Uh, this is our uh, main product which is the uh, <coughs> Corvette of Turkish Navy and we have Vectis uh, which in which we may extensively use of Qt and before starting this project we also get training from KDAP about OpenGL and we have products on for air platforms both uh, military and civil and <clears throat> normally uh, our company has three mission engineering technology and consultancy uh, all of them are a company as large as a company <clears throat> Here are some uh, of our products. We, in almost all of them, uh, we are using Qt for displaying OpenGL widgets. <coughs> and here, this is our uh, customer, Temsa Global. Maybe you may know about it, uh, which is Turkey's leading uh, vehicle manufacturer. Uh, they are investing in next generation of vehicles, smart buses, and we are doing the smart part of these uh, vehicles. Today I am going to talk to you about the IVA system that we developed for Temsa. Uh, the system runs on low-end Android device, and it is part of a a big data analytics system which shows real-time information about the vehicle to the driver. Uh, it's fed by telemetry overland and the most interesting part is for me is that the device is not uh, connected directly to the internet because of the security reasons. It has just only local area network connection with the telemetry device. But uh, the once the software is deployed to device, it will be used more than 1,000 of vehicles all around the world, so we need to take care of to some bugs in the future. Thus, uh, we need to have some uh, mechanism to send updates to the, this internet isolated device. And why could is preferred uh, before starting the project we have very limited time and even we have limited time the device which the software is going to run on is not clear at the beginning and there were two options one Windows and the other is Android instead of waiting for it to be clear I started coding in Qt because it was platform independent and also I was able to transfer my C++ experience to the Disney project because I don't have Android experience before, even with Qt. Also, the device is uh, isolated from the world. It has only one output for power and one output for network in telemetry. There is no button. <coughs> there is no uh, USB input or something. So deploying the code to test is quite time consuming process. With the help of Qt, I was able to test my, test my program on my desktop. <coughs> the reasons for choosing QML is it's easiness to program GUIs <laughs> interfaces and easy to append animations to the items on the screen. And also I'm a Swift developer I really like the way I lay out items using uh, QML because in Xcode, Apple's auto layout interface, you always get boring uh, warnings. 
if you are working on a large project, maybe there are hundreds of warnings about the laying out items. Comparing to it, I really like the way QML is handling this layout. <coughs> As I said before, I don't have experience uh, even with Qt, Android experience. So I trusted Qt because I know about the Qt and I believe that it will be easy to start if, if I start with Qt. And also, it was my first multi-language software development experience and fortunately Q, Qt's utility to Q, utility Q translator made it very easy for me to develop uh, because of the nature of our customers, uh, our softwares are mostly, all of them are in English, but <coughs> the first experience was exciting with Q translator. I start from uh, start from wide <coughs> view of the project. <coughs> we have a big data analytics backend, which we collect data all over, the, which we will collect data from all buses all over the world, and we are going to process the data coming from buses, so that we can <coughs> see uh, instantly is there any violation of rules or we can learn the behavior of the driver during driver driving. In vehicle part, the system has four components. One of them is IVA device and the two-sided arrows here is showing two-way communication between the component and telemetry device. By the way, telemetry device is also developed for us, uh, which collects some information and share its data to our control center uh, over 3G. Okay, I said the IVA device is offline and only the telemetry device is connected to the internet. And we have handled the problem of updates uh, by downloading the updates telemetry device, if any. So the IVI system is constantly asking IVI telemetry to if any updates to it. If so, we are down downloading the, up uh, the new version of the software and running it the next startup of the device. I will show uh, how Qt could help us to do this in later. And here, actually, uh, we have two software, so do, two programs running on Android device. Uh, one is a manager. It handles updates or installing the new <laughs> update. If any update is installed or there is no update, its mission is to start the other program, which is the real IVA software. And by the help of Qt, uh, we don't need to know the locations, the writable locations in the Android device because the, normally the application in Android devices are not easily communicate with the others because each program has its own data bundle so you, the other application cannot access. But using this syntax, the Qt's utility write standard paths module. I don't care about where I can write just because I'm writing the same way. I'm writing and if I read the same way, there is no problem with file paths. And here in the top right, uh, actually we have root privileges on the device. So our program is not, is, is running some Linux commands to uh, install and start another programs. By help of Q process, we are able to send, run this, uh, pro we are able to run this uh, commands in the device. Uh, 
uh, we need to find a device which must be as uh, cheap as possible. So the, our device does not have battery in order to reduce the cost. <coughs> so the device with no battery was always subject to a power outage during the uh, program run. Uh, the device can be uh, cut, cut on electricity, so the undefined behavior may occur in the next start. In order to <coughs> pro prevent this situation, we are using we are using uh, three files to save the current state of the program, which <coughs> which are uh, synchronized interchangeably. So, if power outage occurs, and only we have only one file corrupted, so we can start with the old the other file. By the way, uh, the device is uh, started from ignition switch of the vehicle. So it gets signal from our telemetry when it needs to be closed, but opening, <coughs> but there may be power outage. Also the power outage causes a problem. It is time and date. It resets every time the device is closed because there is no <coughs> internal clock. Uh, we use another Linux commands on the device to set the time that we get the GPS in the telemetry device. And here a video of the running of it will switch to English. Okay. Here are the information that our uh, telemetry device is capable of acquiring from the vehicle. And there are some <coughs> warnings in case anything is wrong with the system. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to bring device with me, so I recorded the screen recording, so the numbers are always zero. And <coughs> here are the bars that warns the user about failures, and here are the one part that make QML uh, it make it easy to implement. Because for the demonstration purposes, I converted these warnings to the mouse clicked ones. So normally, if a <coughs> error message is sent from telemetry, the alarms here triggers. But just a few lines of code make me uh, <coughs> able to uh, turn this to a. Uh, Turn this to once that is uh, triggered when mouse clicks on it. And here the codes that convert the, this item to the mouse click the, to one that is uh, triggered when mouse clicks on it, and the. Easy binding QML property binding is also uh, help us to implement these features. That is <coughs> the critical level co colors for critical levels are <coughs> connected to directly to the uh, Boolean variables. Uh, also, when the first time I'm given the mockups of the user interface, I was thinking to use a background image. You can see the background image is a gradient one, and I didn't know that it was possible on QML, but <coughs> the Qt documentation, I see that it is more easy than using a background image to get a gradient color. Here, 
the few lines of code shows that how easy it is easy, how easy to implement the animations to the objects. And also, I was in a QML tutorial yesterday. They were offering different ways to do, make your programs scale to different size of devices. But uh, I choose a different way. I <coughs> place it and I set the sizes of the all the items to the size of the screen height because the screen height never changes or if you rotate, change the orientation of device, it changes. Uh, this evaluation, this statement is evaluated less frequently, so there is no performance cost as for me. So by use, using this way, our programs looks similar in almost every device that we have tried on uh, these devices are Apple iPads, different size of iPhones, and Android phone and tablets, and my desktop. To conclude, <coughs> without any Android experience, I have developed a software that is capable of doing almost everything that a software is expected to do. It has communic it communicates with other devices on network. It is updatable and it has uh, animating interface and it is scales to all sizes of the screens and it has information persistent and we are able to get our time from outside but as before the project, I still don't have Android coding experience. Thanks to Qt. And <laughs> Thanks for listening to me. Any questions? Yes. You? What? Is Android 4.4? Uh, because we need to use a cheap device, so we wanted to. Actually, our customers offered us the device because it, it was the cheapest one. It was a normal consumer device, so I think it was more experience. Ex uh, more expensive if they use a Linux based tablet because in Turkey I didn't see any uh, Linux running device. We are uh, buying Windows devices and installing the Linux onto them in Turkey. Any question? Was this only in infotainment or did you also try? It is only for in infotainment. No, y yes, there is a speed gauge, but uh, the actual tachometer is also another electronic device other than this. And this is only for uh, the speed gauge is not actually just its purpose is to show. And we are using it to calculate some statistic but it's not uh, its main purpose is not to provide speed to the driver okay thank you